Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Vivo Adibawale. This is your first time. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here today. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back on this channel. We talk about Jesus and your mental health. Jesus came to give us abundant life, right? But your mind has to be whole to really enjoy this abundant life. And yeah, so thank you for being here today. If you haven't liked, shared, subscribed, I want to encourage you to do that. And also, watch till the end of the video so that you can really get what we are talking about today today we're going to be sharing about how jesus took care of his mental health he's our perfect example right we are following in his steps so that we can look like him right so how did he take care of his mental health i have today i have seven ways jesus took care of his mental health and how you should also take care of your mental health very important the first way is that he prayed a lot and spent time with god hi you know, the Bible tells us that men ought to pray always and not to faint. It is supposed to be our lifestyle. We are supposed to be people of prayer. Many of us are quite fickle, you know. The difference between us and many other religions, one other religion that is the second most popular in Nigeria, <laughs> I don't want to mention the name, but you see that those people, they pray five times a day, constantly praying. What is wrong with Christians? How come we are not praying, right? We need pray when we need something from the Lord. We are always supposed to be in connection with the Lord. You know, I know the devil will tempt you. That's why you even pray. Look at how your life is going. Everything is going well. Don't take the bait of Satan. He wants to deceive you so that he can attack you. Pray. Um, a musician, a Christian gospel musician said that if I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. You know, the devil, it's like, prayer is like your connection with God. It's like, you know, the umbilical cord between you and your mother in the womb, right? Prayer is like your connection. It's like your umbilical cord between you and God the Father. If the enemy is able to cut it off by deception, by distraction, he will, he will open the door of your life to be messed up. Hallelujah. So don't stop praying. The Bible says in Mark chapter 6 verse 46, and he sent them away. After he had finished his miracle and all those things, sent them away, departed to the mountain to pray. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. Mark, Matthew 14 verse 23, right? So I read two scriptures, Mark 6 verse 46, he sent them away and departed to the mountain to pray. Matthew 14 23, he sent he, he sent the multitude away, went up the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. Hallelujah. So Jesus prayed. It is a way to take care of your mental health. When I struggled with intrusive thoughts, I could not afford therapy. What did I do? I prayed like I was a crazy person because literally I was losing my mind. I was going mad, you know, so I was praying and I was praying. We must pray. Second thing, he had a support network. You need people that can support you. You need a community. There's no, none of us was created to live by ourselves. I know of somebody who had an experience, went to heaven, and there was nobody there in his experience. He said it felt like hell. We need each other. I don't know why we always fight with each other, right? Muslim against Christian, um, one tribe against another tribe, you know, different races, just nonsense. We need each other. We need community. One person offended you in church, you stop going to church. Okay, find a different church to go to. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Ask God, okay, what should I do? Don't just be offended and just cut people off your life. You need, it is deception of the devil. Satan is trying to take you out. When he takes you out of your support group, he is trying to take you out. It's better the support group that God has sanctioned. He is trying, where there's mutual respect, where there's love, where there's honor, where there's continual growth. When there is a community like that and the enemy is trying to take you out, he's trying to destroy your life. You need a community. Jesus had his disciples. Then he had his core in his inner circle, Peter, James, and John. Then he had the 12. You need a community. He fasted. Hmm. Matthew 4 verse 1 to 11. I found myself, in fact, let me confess. I recently found myself struggling with this, especially as a mom, as a young mom of two toddlers, you know. But, you know, also give yourself grace, by the way, because with fasting, it can become so legalistic. They are like, ah, I fasted 40 days. I fasted 21 days. It's not, it's not a competition, dear brother. It's not a competition, dear sister. <laughs> you are fasting to put your flesh under right sometimes i really try to feel like i can't stand it but it is a necessity there's no other way to put your flesh on that i wish there was a way i would have followed it hallelujah so he fasted sometimes you know how the enemy gets us by walking in tandem with our flesh so you have seen something you saw a pornographic which is which was my own story i saw a pornographic um, image was one time you know and then he he after i forgot about it years later that thing now came sometime later, you know, 
that picture now came to my mind and he said and started with intrusive thoughts you know and so the enemy walks in tandem with our flesh but when we are fasting we are putting our flesh under which is why one of the things when i struggled with intrusive thoughts one of the things the holy spirit told me to do when after praying so much was to go on a fast you know and so i did that fast jesus fasted so who i who do you think you are that you will not fast please help me explain who do you think you are that you will not fast because you will fast he trusted and obeyed God. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. You know, he says, Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6 says that, you know, we are to trust the Lord with all our hearts and lean on our own understanding in all our ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Also, Hebrews 5, verse 7. It says about Jesus, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. So he feared God. We have to learn to fear God. We have to trust God. We have to obey God. There's no other way around it. Sometimes it's a struggle. For when you are struggling to obey God, that is when you keep crying, God, help me. God, strengthen me with my by your spirit in my naman so that I can obey you. Read the word of God. Meditate. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. The truth of the matter is that sometimes we'll be weak. Sometimes we'll be strong. But in those times of strength, use it as an opportunity to be praying, God, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. That's even the... I feel like help me is two words but it's like the best prayer you can ever pray because this world <laughs> i can give you a lot of tools for mental health things and and you know coping strategies and but if you don't deal with it from the realm of the spirit i'll be wasting my time i'll be wasting my time so from the realm of the spirit we attack it we join ourselves to the lord he will join to the lord is one spirit with him we walk in tandem with him we walk deliberately with the lord right and then we apply the tools in the realm of the spirit in the realm of the physical so that those things will actually align together we are not only physical beings we are spiritual beings right right now you are talking i'm seeing you i'm seeing you are seeing my body but i am not my body i am a spirit that lives that has a soul that lives in a body you have never seen me before i've never seen you but you see my house that the house that i live on this planet with my body and so we have to do the the spiritual and do the physical so Jesus trusted and obeyed God. He knew the word and depended on the Holy Spirit. Jesus answered and said to them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Matthew 22, verse 29. You have to know the word of God. In the time of Jesus' temptation, you know, he said it is written. The enemy will come to tempt you with pictures. He will bring intrusive thoughts with pictures, flashbacks. He will bring intrusive thoughts with words. You can't speak up. You can, you can say, no, those thoughts are not me. And in the name of Jesus, this, this, that, that. You have to speak up. But if you don't know the word, how will you speak up, please? What will you even say if you don't know the word of God? So you must know the word. You must meditate on the word day and night, consistently. Sometimes you might not be able to stay day and night. Let me not lie to you. You're right? But consistently, looking at the word of God. Looking at the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. He stood steadfast. Jesus stood steadfast. Temptations are not from experience and from other people I've heard. It's not necessarily, Satan will not come once and say, do this, just do this. It will come, it can come with your emotions, like a rush of emotions. It can come with feelings, right? Your feelings can be manipulated. Emotions, also, the, it will keep coming over and over and over and over again. But you have to stand fast and say, stand firm in your faith, stand firm in your in who you are and say no this is beneath me i will not do this because i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus having been set free from sin i became a slave to righteousness i am a slave to righteousness slaves to righteousness cannot have other masters you have a responsibility to stand firm jesus stood firm when satan came to tempt him i don't believe that satan just came once right the bible talks about it in nlt i like the nlt translation because for me it really describes what the lord was going through i believe that satan kept, kept coming once jesus was hungry satan kept coming kept coming kept coming but well, jesus was standing firm he stood firm the last thing that the lord did was that he rested it's good to rest for your mental health if you don't rest you'll become burnt out you will lose the zest for life if you don't rest you must rest right Matthew 8 verse 24, suddenly a fierce storm struck the lake with waves, breaking into the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. I know the Bible talks about him spending his night on the Mount of Olives praying, Olivet praying, but he also found time to rest. 
especially mothers young mothers i want to talk to you specifically rest rest too many people are dying and leaving children for wicked people to maltreat die so that your children will not be maltreated please not die rest <laughs> rest so that your children will not be maltreated please rest rest take care of yourself mentally draw now right meditate very important even with this journaling thing i'm not as consistent as i would love to be but i'm working on it you know we always try to be better so take care of yourself have your support network you know it doesn't have to be having like close friends at this point in my life i'm believing god for sister friends but you know you can have your siblings your mothers your, your father your husband you know just people that care about you yeah and rest so just to give summary a quick summary of everything i have said jesus prayed a lot he had his support network he fasted he trusted god he obeyed god he knew the word he stood steadfast and he rested very important i believe that this has blessed you and because it has blessed you i want to encourage you to like to share and to subscribe and i'll see you in my next video have a great guys have a great rest of the day guys <laughs> See you in my next video. Bye.